today we are taking a look at the Derwent Intense Blocks. This is the 12 color set. These have been around for a while, but since Derwent recently released their new and ink tense half pans, I thought now would be a great time to take a look at these. You guys have seen me use ink tense color pencils as a way of adding additional details to my watercolor illustrations here on the channel for a few years now. I use them quite frequently on my watercolor comic, Seven Inch Kara. So I am most interested right now in seeing how the ink tense blocks differ from the ink tense color pencils and how the ink tense blocks just kind of handle as watercolors on their own. So this is my color pencil collection, my watercolor color pencil collection. I'll put this over here to the side for a quick reference. The ink tense blocks, if you can't find them open stock, they may be difficult to find in the US open stock. I've never seen them open stock anyway. Um, come in these nice tin boxes and this one is shrink wrap. And I will say, I am not the sort of artist who typically uses watercolor crayons, watercolor pencils, as they're kind of intended to be used. When I do use them, it's usually as like a space sort of conservation. The colors are numbered, but the name doesn't seem to be printed on them. And they're actually softer than I expected. I expected them, and a little more gummy too. I expected them to be hard and smooth like the Windsor and Newton salt, solid watercolors. After Went, we pride ourselves in creating unique and innovative products. Our passion for developing cutting edge art materials is backed up by over 180 years of expertise in crafting high quality fine art pencils. Derwin Ink Tents is an extremely versatile product that allows, oh, that delivers the qualities of ink in solid form. For more information and tips about working with ink tents, including videos and step-by-step -step projects, visit www.pencil.co.uk. And there we have it. These water soluble ink blocks combine the versatility of ink tents with the freedom of blocks. When water is added, deep intense colors are created, giving a pure and translucent ink-like effect. Once dry, ink tents becomes permanent and can be worked over without affecting the layers of vivid color. Techniques, one, apply water over dry block marks to create vivid, transparent, translucent wash. Two, take color directly from the block with a wet paintbrush. And what's kind of always turned me on about ink tents as a sort of watercolor ask or ink wash product is the fact that once you've made your marks on the paper and they've been wet or wetted down, um, they are permanent. You can paint over them and they're not going to lift up and they're not going to muddy. So that's kind of why I invested in this format because I do have the ink tents color pencils, but this is going to allow me to cover larger areas in kind of a different way. Derwent's Ink Tents blocks are available open stock or in sets, and you can get them at dickblick.com. The sets are available in 12, 24, 36, or 72, and they come in really nice reusable metal tins. On the inside, there is a divider, and as your collection grows, you can get rid of the divider and just fill it with your Ink Tents blocks. The colors in this 12-piece set are Sun Yellow, Tangerine, Poppy Red, Fuchsia, Deep Indigo, Go, sea blue, teal, oh, teal green, apple green, leaf green, baked earth, bark, and ink black. And what I want to find out today, besides how do they handle, how do they compare to some of the other blocks and crayons on the market, is how do they compare to the ink tents color pencils, watercolor pencils, ink color pencils, whatever you want to call them. Now, what makes ink tents really special is that once they've been activated with water, they're not going to move anymore. So they're a lot like doing India ink washes. This can be really great if you like to do toning or maybe you don't want your watercolors to be muddy. You want your colors to stay clear, vivid and bright. These could be a great solution for that. And they can be used along with regular traditional watercolors and regular traditional watercolor pencils to create watercolor pieces. Now I've never used the ink tents blocks before, but I'm really excited to give them a try for a couple of reasons. One, I really want to try the ink tents half pans that they're releasing. That just really seems like my jam. Two, there's a lot you can do with these. There's um, all sorts of techniques and tutorials here on YouTube, although not on my channel 
channel, so I'll link them in the description below, where you can grate them, where you can sprinkle them in water. I mean, all kinds of really cool stuff. They seem really versatile. They're fairly inexpensive for what you're getting. The set of 12 is 2512, but they are, I would say, about a, um, a half pan to a whole pan probably a little more of watercolor in a concentrated form. Now I do know from experience that their watercolor pencils pack a huge punch, a lot of color in a single mark. Gotta be used with discretion. And I really like using the Derwent Intense color or watercolor pencils on my Kara pages to kind of add final details, tighten things up. They are my favorite watercolor pencils now. I do say that with a caveat because I have been corrected so many times when I refer to them as watercolor pencils, but that is how I use them. So your mileage may vary. Your experiences may differ from mine. I am a watercolor comic artist, so I'm going to kind of approach this unbox and swatch from that angle. So I don't have quite a one-to-one -one with these. I pulled out the ones that I do have. I have a pretty large collection, but I've been picking them up open stock from Jerry's Artorama based on the needs of my comic. So I don't have necessarily a complete set. And the first thing I wanna do, cause there's so many ways you can use these, is I'm going to swatch them on some fluid cold press watercolor paper. They're buttery. Oh, it just snapped in my hand. Okay, so I really need to be careful. They're buttery, they're a little bit soft. They're a little bit chalky. There's a lot of, a lot of schmutz coming from them. And this sort of application is probably a little more direct, a little more saturated than a lot of watercolorists are gonna wanna work, at least for their first stages, because these watercolor pencils, these Derwent inks, ink blocks really pack a punch. There's a lot of color, a lot of pigment. And unlike some watercolor pencils, they really do a good job releasing that color. I found a lot of watercolor pencils, including the Derwent watercolor pencils, are just kind of weak compared to pigment load and pigment release. So the ink tents are definitely a favorite of mine. They also seem to have a tendency to get all over your hands. So if you're an artist who likes to keep your hands clean because it has a tendency to get everywhere, that would be me. Uh, if my hands get dirty, it's gonna end up everywhere you might want to wrap these in something like washi tape or find an alternate means of working with them. So as you guys can see, they deliver a lot of bright, vivid color just straight out of the pan, no water added. So here are the blocks laid out with their swatches. A little bit later in this video, I'm gonna do a one-to-one -one comparison between the Inktense color pencils I have and the Inktense blocks just to see how they kind of stack up and if there's any performance differences. I am going to go ahead and use some clean water though. And I'll zoom in because I know this is where the magic happens for a lot of people. So we've got a lot of powder here. That's a lot of loose pigment. So this is how it looks just when we kind of smooth it together, very solid. I don't know that I would actually easily, I mean, we just, this is just very simple, casual swatches. I don't know that we could easily recreate that. And then this is it kind of swatched out solid. The orange isn't quite as solid. Swatched out. Solid. Swatched out. And I'm just going to keep going along. Something I really like about these is that you're able to activate all of the mark um, with a lot of watercolor pencils, especially, or a lot of watercolor crayons, but also a lot of watercolor pencils. And a lot of the watercolor pencils and crayons I've reviewed for this channel, like the Lyra Aquacolors, I believe, and the Daniel Smith, and, you know, just some of the other ones I've reviewed here, um, you never are able to really activate all of the mark you've made. So you're left with kind of a scrumbling effect. And it's not quite as easy to 
to wash it away for this one with that particular area. But in general, I can activate all of the mark and kind of blend it out. And that's something I'm really enjoying because it means that you can kind of quickly apply like a sky, right? And then add water and you're gonna get kind of a more seamless blend than you would with other brands. And the colors are just gorgeously uh, vibrant. And that's something you will sometimes get with cheap watercolors that have a lot of additives in it. So I really look forward. I've had, I've had very few problems with the color pencil version of these. I look really forward to kind of putting these to the test and seeing how they stack up. I'm really hoping, um, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more digging. I'm pretty sure these are India ink based, sort of like pit pens. Um, and that would explain why they're water soluble, but yet they're permanent after the water has been added, after they've been activated. But sometimes it can be hard to find definitive information like that. So I'm going to keep digging and hopefully I'll have that for you guys by the end of the video. And if I do not, I'll certainly have it in the blog post. Okay, so that is all 12 of these colors swatched out by just kind of scrubbing them on the paper. So next, we're going to do the same thing with the Inktense color pencils. And I think I have 12 colors that match. So as you guys can see, it takes a little bit more work to cover the same area. These are not quite as soft or prone to snapping as the Inktense blocks since they do have a wooden protection around the soft, soft Inktense cores. They can get a little melty if it gets too hot in your studio. Same goes for the Inktense block, so that's just something to kind of be aware of. And I would imagine they use different binders since they're in different formats. Though, to be honest, I don't know that for sure, and that's something I'm gonna need to look into for you guys. So I have eight of the 12 colors in this format. So it's not quite ideal, but I think it's enough to kind of give you an idea. We have from top to bottom, sun yellow, tangerine, poppy red, fuchsia, deep indigo, sea blue, teal green, and bark. And I'll zoom in again and we'll do our swatch. So we're gonna do one in the middle where there's lots and lots of pigment. And then a gradiated one kind of going out to the side. I will caveat with this. Derwent is much cheaper on Dick Blick and they do have a listing for those half pans I mentioned above. Now they are on back order. So rather than paying the 50 something that they're going for on Amazon right now, I would really suggest that if you have to get them, you get them from Dick Blick. Dick Blick also has the Inktense blocks and the Inktense color pencils available in sets and open stock. So you can put together the collection that works for your studio's needs. And that way you're not buying a bunch of pencils you might not ever use. Or if you need to add something to a small set, you can do so quite easily. And here are all the colors laid out. I'm going to set this aside to give it a chance to dry as well. And the next test I want to do is I want to use the Inktense blocks as dry watercolor pans. I want to see how they kind of reconstitute. And that's kind of important since we're going to be taking a look at the Inktense half pans at some point. I need to have a basis of comparison. And these are designed to be painted like that. All right, nice vibrant color so far. And I'm basically doing two types of tests. I'm doing a very saturated version of the color, like the mass tone, and then I'm kind of blending it out into a gradient just to see if anything separates out, if there's any granulation, any sedimentation, that sort of thing. I would also imagine though, that working 
wet like this kind of changes the structural stability of the individual blocks. So what you might want to do is you might want to snap them in half and use one half for direct painting and the other half for direct application or just allow them to dry fully. Colors are actually very, very nice like this, especially this indigo here. Derwent makes a grater that can be used for the color pencils or for the blocks. And it's basically like a cheese grater. You grate some color off into a small canister underneath, and that can be sprinkled onto your paper, wet or dry, or you can mix water with it in order to use it as watercolor color. You could, however, probably use a cheap mini cheese grater picked up from like, you know, the kitchen section of Marshalls or whatever, for a similar sort of effect. And Derwent is an English brand. I'm not sure if these are actually made in England, so that's gonna be something else to add to the list of things I need to find out before I sign off. All right, now to let these dry. These have just about dried. I'm going to remove these and grab all three so you guys can visually compare. You can give them an optical pat down if you so desire. And I've also perhaps found the answers to our questions. I had to do a little bit of digging. It's on the Derwent online brochure. It's not just like right out there on their site. So you guys can check the description below for links. I apologize that these have curled a bit uh, when you remove things from the block early. That is a thing that tends to happen. So I'll go ahead, try to weigh them down in a way that you guys can still see the colors. Isn't it handy that I have so many art supplies on hand? All right, so how do they differ from watercolor? Intense blocks are similar and at the same time very different from watercolors. They are both water soluble and both create a thin paint as opposed to art bar or acrylics. But where watercolor is subtle, ink tense is vivid. Where watercolor pigment is more opaque, ink tense is pure and translucent. Where watercolor is a pan of paint, ink tense blocks can also be picked up and used to draw with. Where watercolor can be reworked, ink tense is permanent. Ink tense permanence explained with a top secret blend of of ingredients. See, every company does this. It's so frustrating. I would really, I mean, with the FDA, you're required to list most of the products that go into the foods we eat. Considering many art supplies are toxic, it would be really nice if art supply companies gave us the same respect and regard. But I don't know that they will until there's government intervention. So, ink tense permanence explained. With a top secret blend of ingredients, our innovative ink tense range has an added bonus, the ability to make it permanent. No magic is required, just a drop of water. Essentially, all we need to do is add water to the marks to dissolve the pigment. This allows the pigment to penetrate into the surface you are working on. Once dry, it becomes permanent. This means you can layer colors one over another without affecting the underlying layers. They do not mix together and become a mushy brown. They remain crisp and pure. Because of these qualities, ink tents can also be used on fabric and silk. And there was a caveat. You must make sure that all pigment, so no bits and biddles, no schmutz on the paper. You must make sure that all pigment has been dissolved in the water to make it permanent. Any dry pigment will be washed out if further water is applied. And I'm going to link that in the description. And they also, in this brochure, discuss grippers, which keep you from getting your hands dirty. <laughs> and uh, the grate and shake, which we just discussed. So over here are the swatches where we just kind of picked some up from our ink tense blocks. Here is where we applied the ink tense blocks to the paper and these are the ink tense color pencils. And fear not, if you can't get a close look at them, I'm going to scan them and have av them available at a large size so you guys can see with labels. So let's compare the two blocks. I think the color directly from the block, um, like from block straight onto paper and then water added, definitely more intense, vivid colors. You do get some lines though. With the 
using them sort of like watercolor paints. They're a little more subtle, a little bit more muted. And then with the pencils, I feel like when you paint out with the blocks, you're still getting a more saturated color than when you do a gradient with the pencils. And Karen Dosh also makes a very similar product. Um, I think I tested it for the blog and then never really wrote about it, or I may have done a video on it. So I'll try to dig that up for you guys. So the next thing I want to test is I want to test how well these work for layering. So I am going to apply some areas directly onto the paper. And I am going to paint some on. I want to see how vivid they stay. And these pick up, when you apply it directly to the paper, there's a lot of paint. So if you're someone who enjoys working much larger, these could be really great for your needs. These could also be really useful for doing like under glazes and toning with contrasting colors and still keeping some of the vibrance of those colors. So we've got our first layer down. I'm gonna let this dry fully and then I'm gonna try to reactivate it. The first layer isn't entirely dry, but I'm going to start trying to apply a second layer. This will sort of give us an opportunity to see whether or not this lifts up. I'm gonna be very gentle because as you guys can see, I added too much water and it wants to get melty. So that is a consideration and I'm gonna do a direct application actually going to apply some water there and we'll do a wet into dry application see how that handles i've also heard that these blend pretty well on textured papers using either blending stumps or a fan like a fan brush so it would be interesting to see how something that's been kind of nicely blended out might handle some water activation. They promise us non-muddy colors. I'm also kind of going for some mud here just to see if it can resist. Now I am noticing that in some areas, these are kind of resist resisting going down. Those are areas that seem to have a heavy application that still might be a little bit wet. So I'm gonna use a spray bottle and spray some of it. And kind of a slap it brush application. And we're gonna let that dry. Now I will say, I feel like some of the colors are getting muddy and to be fair, I did add colors that turn to mud when you mix them all together and I am mixing them all together. So I kind of feel like this test is just not gonna be conclusive enough for me. So I'm gonna just try doing, after this is dried, pure layers of color one on top of the other and see if that makes a difference. But I'm gonna let this dry first. Right now, it definitely looks like we've got mud. Let's see if it dries less muddy. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. It does look kind of muddy. Let's try a different technique where we're going to paint the colors on and let them dry layer by layer. Maybe we can get a better result than that. Not that that's super terrible. I mean, it's pretty par for the course for watercolor in general. You know what I didn't do? What I forgot to do? I forgot to do a transparency test with these. So I promise by the time I say goodbye, that will be accomplished. I will have one to show you. And just as a reminder, although I did some digging, Derwent is not gonna go on the record and say, what makes these so permanent? I'm still betting they're India ink because they really remind me of how Bombay's India inks kind of react. And I'll keep digging. Maybe I'll have an answer for you guys in the blog post.
and I definitely plan on doing a field test with these. I'm probably going to use these and the color pencil version. And as you guys can see this time, I'm not trying to slop every single color together on top of every other color. I'm trying to be a little strategic with them so that we can hopefully get some good results. I do like the browns they included with this. Like the color choice, I'm pretty happy with. Very brilliant, bright, fun colors, but also some nice neutrals. So you could also use this for like landscape painting or even sketching crowd scenes, people, that sort of thing. All right, I'm gonna let this one dry and then we're gonna do a second layer on top of it. So Kabocha has been helping me do a little bit of research on these because we, you know, I wanted to know if they were using India ink and I couldn't find that information online. And these things are kind of crazy. And I mean that in a really good way. They're light fast. They can be stored in almost any conditions according to their MSDS. They are completely non-toxic. The, any sort of precautions or hazards are just kind of very run of the mill for anything you might be grading up like a, a breathing hazard kind of thing. I mean, these are just, how do I, losing words? I'm just really, really impressed because uh, I've gotten really used to like quality watercolor supplies. You know, there's a there's a degree of toxicity. We're always kind of rolling the dice. Um, but with these, it really seems like a lot of those concerns have been taken away. So they're about $2 a stick open stock, or you can get them in sets like I mentioned before. And this 12 piece set, 12 piece set is about $25 on Dick Blick. Now, as an adult artist, I think that's a completely reasonable price. And I'm not saying these are not adult great art supplies. I've seen a lot of reviews and a lot of blogs from professionals who love these. So that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is you, if you're looking for a high quality art supply for your intrepid teenager, your younger artist, you know, I would say 10 through whatever, 10 to infinity, Could probably go younger if you want, but you know, we'll start at 10. These would be a great option for that. You can build up subtle gradations of color, or if you have kids who are impatient and they want a high impact, high chroma, high energy, something now, they can go ahead and do that as well just by directly applying it on the paper. The colors are really bright, they're really fun. As you guys are seeing, we can kind of layer them over each other. They're not gonna get muddy. They're not gonna, you know, turn ugly too much on the paper. You can always pick up additional colors as you run out or as your kid or you wants to add colors to the collection. I'm just, the more I'm learning about ink tents, the more I'm really impressed and kind of excited about them. I've used the color pencils for years and I really like them, but the blocks just seem like they add a new dimension to this. So if you, maybe you're a teacher and you know, you have a bit of a budget that you can actually invest in some supplies for the kids and you're not just, you don't, you're not limited to like Crayola only or the huge bottles of Blick liquid watercolors. This would be something I would definitely recommend for your class. You can break these up. Um, you can get three or four out of each and kind of make your own half pans for the kids to use. They can use them as is. I mean, they will be prone to snapping, but I would hold on to those broken pieces and just have people also use those as watercolors. So I'm really, really impressed by these and I hope you guys will keep an eye out for the blog post. I'm gonna talk about it in more in depth there and check the description because I've been doing a lot of research for this video and I'm linking a lot of that research in the description below. I'm gonna give this a chance to dry and then I'm going to do a third layer on top of it. All right, this has had a chance to dry. As you guys can see, our second layer, the colors have layered very vibrantly. They're not quite as transparent as Derwent makes claims that they are, 
as you guys can kind of see, but they also haven't turned to mud. We're gonna try doing a very thick third glaze or third layer. And I'm gonna get try to get some of these colors to kind of reactivate. So do a little bit of color mixing. And although it's still wet, I can definitely tell that these colors are going to be fairly translucent. No real muddying, or no significant muddying at least. Not a lot of reactivation. If there is any, it could also just be because that area is still a little bit wet. All right, let this dry and we'll check back in. All right, so all three layers have dried and the colors are looking very vibrant. There's good layering, decent transparency, although it's not as transparent as I feel they've kind of advertised. It's as transparent as I feel you can rightfully expect for the most part. If we were using dye-based watercolors then you would get full transparency, but they would always be uh, reworkable, basically. You would always have reactivation problems. And keep in mind that this is inexpensive cellulose paper. So on something nicer, like a cotton rag paper, you're probably going to have even better results. I've noticed that cotton rag papers tend to just overall perform better than um, cellulose papers like this. I promised you guys a transparency test before I said goodbye, and here it is. The bottom row are still drawing. The top row was applied using the ink tense blocks, like they were watercolor pans. So we mixed up the color, and then I did a mass tone square at the top and a gradient square underneath. And then for this row here, it was directly applied to the paper, and I left the top to kind of represent that that hasn't been activated at all. And then I did a gradation kind of going down as well. So this should hopefully give you guys some idea as to the transparency. These are a little more opaque than you would expect for something that continually advertises itself as being transparent, 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 transparent. Um, but they're about as opaque as other watercolors and they are about as opaque as, say, student grade watercolors, which is probably where these would fall if we were talking just about those kind of working qualities. However, I do find that they layer beautifully. They don't get too muddy. They don't reactivate too much and they're really versatile. Plus, as an art supply, they're just kind of easy to, to use. You can use them a multitude of ways. They are a little brittle. I had another one break on me. That's not the biggest deal, but they're a little soft, but they're very buttery. There's good. They lay down a lot of pigment on the paper, which is something I can't even necessarily say for the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. I had a lot of trouble with some of those, believe it or not. So they're fairly inexpensive for what they are very versatile. You can work with them in a number of ways. Um, should last you a fairly long time if you're using them as paints. If you're using them as watercolor crayons, of course, they are going to go a little faster like that. Um, I would recommend them for a variety of artists, be it a professional or a seasoned watercolorist who's just looking for something kind of fun to add to their arsenal, to a beginner who's looking to get a lot of value out of their paints, isn't looking to spend a lot of money, and want something that is easy to take care of, easy to use, very little fuss, very little messing around. These are really great. If you own the Derwent Intense Pencils, I feel like these offer a very different experience. They have similar working properties, but these are very different, can be used in a just a different set of use cases basically than the Inktense. And I really look forward to taking a look at the Inktense watercolor blocks and seeing how those compare as well. It would be really exciting if Derwent went another step further and um, tweaked those so that they have their own kind of unique properties or um, 
just bring something new to the table. I always love when companies do something kind of innovative. All right, friends, these have finally had a chance to dry. I should warn you that in their unactivated state, the Derwent Ink Tense blocks are very prone to smearing. In fact, I smeared this just by stacking some watercolor paper on top of it. So that is something you should definitely be aware of. If you're looking for a way to fix it without it uh, becoming water activated, you could probably use a spray fixative, although those also tend to um, have like a water, not a water, but a liquid base. So that might actually serve the same purpose. So anyway, they haven't changed too much since they've had a chance to dry. Colors are still fairly bright and vibrant. And I'll have a scan for you guys that you can check out. You can, however, erase them before, or at least erase some of them, lift some of them with an eraser before they've been activated. Once they've been activated though, they're not going anywhere. I have this piece here from earlier. I'm gonna do one more test where we try to get these colors moving and my water is not the cleanest, but it looks like there's pretty minimal reactivation. So most of the color you guys are seeing is from my gross water, not really from these watercolors reactivating and moving. There's a little bit of movement with some of the browns, a little bit of movement with the blue. If we were using clear water, clean water, it would be a little bit more noticeable, but it, that would only serve to show how minimal it is. So yeah, I'm actually really impressed by like how little movement there is once these have had a chance to dry because that's not something you normally find with watercolors. I wanna thank you guys so much for checking out my Inktense Blocks Unbox and Swatch. I hope you guys will look forward to the upcoming field test. If you are looking for more watercolor unboxings, swatchings, and reviews, please stick around and check out some of my other watercolor reviews here on this channel. If you're looking for watercolor tutorials, head on over to natosuit.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basics series. I hope you guys found this helpful, useful, and informative. I hope it was able to, I was able to answer some questions for you guys today. And don't ever hesitate to let me know in the questions below if you have further questions. Check the description below for links to all the resources that I have used in today's video, as well as for the information mentioned in this video. And keep an eye out for the blog post, which is coming up soon, which is going to cover all of this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again really soon. Bye, guys.